Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and thanks for joining me for another episode of the All Things Homeopathy Materia Medica series. Today I'll be talking about Staphysagria, a remedy made from the seeds of the palmated larkspur. The genus and species of this plant is Delphinium Staphysagria, and it's a member of the Ranunculaceae family. As we shall see, Staphysagria is one of our most important remedies for the treatment of problems that arise from mental, emotional, and sexual abuse. So let's get started. Now, if I had to sum up the main theme behind Staphysagria, I would say that it is a remedy for the consequences of being unable to cope with the anger that results from the perception that one is being treated disrespectfully or abusively. There's a lot more to it, but that's the basic idea. In simpler terms, it's a remedy for people who struggle with anger and its many emotional and physical ramifications. Oftentimes, but not always, the Staphysagria type is a sweet, soft-spoken person who has a hard time being assertive or standing up for herself. As a consequence, she tends to be an easy target for those who would take advantage of her. Most would-be abusers tend to have a radar for persons who are timid, sensitive, and meek. These mild-mannered Staphysagria types are easy targets for mental, emotional, and sexual abuse, and often suffer from the long-term consequences of that abuse. Staphysagria has a strong tendency to avoid conflict at all costs. This makes them highly unassertive and results in a corresponding tendency to acquiesce, to give in, to submit, to surrender. They usually do not and cannot stand up for themselves, even when people mistreat them or abuse them. When a person repeatedly fails to assert him or herself, it's only natural that this can result in an internal feeling of frustration and anger. However, this creates a problem because Staphysagria is highly averse to anger and will use every trick in the book in order to avoid it. She may simply keep her anger in, refusing to show it or to express it. Although she avoids confrontation and conflict, sometimes she expresses her anger indirectly. She walks away silently and later fantasizes about what she could have said or should have done to fight back. But the problem is that she fears anger. She fears the anger of others and fears her own anger. As her internal anger builds, she begins to fear losing control. She fears that she will fly into a rage. Now, Staphysagria can also vent his anger indirectly by throwing things. An upset child retreats to the safety of his bedroom, where he angrily throws his toys around the room, sometimes even throws things in the direction of the person who upset him. Alternately, he reserves his displeasure and stews in his anger until it finally makes him sick. Here we see why Staphysagria is the main remedy for ailments that result from suppressed anger. Many Staphysagria types turn their anger against themselves. Rather than confront the person who hurt or disrespected him, he somehow manages to convince himself that he is the one at fault. He thinks to himself, maybe I shouldn't have said this, or I shouldn't have done that, as if he is responsible for the abuse directed at him by another. He gets angry at himself and blames himself. Sometimes he denies that he feels any anger at all. He may become so adept at denying his own anger that it winds up being repressed and relegated to the subconscious mind. He buries his anger so effectively that he doesn't even realize it. It's as if it never even occurs to him that anger could be an appropriate response to the situation. Of course, anger is a normal human emotion. Like all other emotions, it serves a practical purpose as long as it's expressed in a healthy manner. Nevertheless, I've had more than a few Staphysagria types 
explained to me the pointlessness of anger. Some claim that anger is destructive and therefore inappropriate in all cases, regardless of the circumstances. It's as if they have rationalized away anger by developing a personal philosophy of life that justifies their never having to deal with it or to express it. On the other hand, when all attempts to hold back or to deny his anger fail, Staphysagria may swing to the other extreme. He instead develops a hair trigger for anger, whereby the slightest perceived insult can cause him to fly into a rage. Now that I've described the various dysfunctional strategies that Staphysagria uses to cope with anger, it's important to understand the reasons for Staphysagria's anger. In many cases, there's a history of some kind of abuse, either physical, psychological, or sexual. Staphysagria's sweet, romantic nature, combined with her tendency to low self-esteem, makes her susceptible to intimidation and domination by abusive people. The perpetrator can be a controlling parent, a jealous sibling, a disrespectful teacher, a domineering coach, or an abusive partner. And rather than defend or protect herself from the offending party, staff is very likely to remain passive unable to fight back and unable to rescue herself from her circumstances. Staphysagria is one of the main remedies for ailments that arise from abuse. Now, it may come as a surprise when we note that the homeopathic literature often describes Staphysagria as having ego problems. Staph lists prominently in repertories under ailments from egotism and haughty, proud. Normally, we don't think of egotistical people as being mild-mannered or meek. We tend to think of them as loud, prideful braggarts who have high opinions of themselves. In the case of Staphysagria, there is no outward show of egotism or boasting. Nevertheless, Staphysagria does have ego issues, just not in the way that we would normally think. Ego can be a confusing word. It can be interpreted as a positive or a negative thing, depending upon the context. The Staphysagri ego is not strong in the sense that it is not a healthy ego. It is a wounded ego, an ego that is offended easily. Staphysagria may have a weak ego, but it is a quietly proud ego. As a consequence, staff has a tendency to overreact to perceived slights. Still, her proud ego is usually hidden from view. Therefore, when faced with conflict, staff is usually too proud to stoop to the level of the person who insults or abuses her. She believes herself to be too dignified to fight back or to argue. Her ego is offended and insulted, but she lacks the ego strength to defend herself. She justifies this in her mind, thinking, I'm better than that. I'm not going to let him make me angry. And in the process of withholding all that wounded pride and anger, she may start to develop symptoms. Staphysagria also lists in repertories under ailments from wounded pride, and wounded honor aggravates. Now let's take a closer look at two words commonly associated with Staphysagria. Those words are mortification and indignation. Mortification is a feeling of humiliation and shame caused by something that wounds one's pride or self-respect. The root of this word, mort, suggests the idea that one feels so embarrassed that he feels he could die. Indignation is a strong feeling of righteous anger at what one considers to be disrespectful, unjust, or mean-spirited. The two words are connected in the sense that a person can become indignant as a result of feeling mortified. Staphysagria's weak ego is sensitive to rudeness, 
is prone to feeling insulted and is offended easily. He feels disrespected, taken advantage of, and taken for granted. The fact that he swallows his anger and feels unable to assert himself makes these feelings of mortification and indignation all the worse. Staff lists prominently in repertories under ailments from insults, ailments from humiliation, ailments from mortification, and ailments from indignation. It's understood that many people with a history of abuse may still carry their wounds with them. For some, it's as if those wounds occurred just yesterday. And such feelings can remain in spite of one's best efforts to overcome them. It's like when a person who was once held up at gunpoint subsequently startles in fright when hearing a door slam. Staphysagria can have the same kind of overreaction, except his reaction involves mortification and angry indignation over perceived slights and insults. Although the prior experience of abuse may have been serious and quite real, the Staphysagria type may react to subsequent insults with an emotional intensity well out of proportion to the more recent offense. It's as if he is still reacting to the original offense that occurred long ago. This hair trigger can be so sensitive that Staphysagria can sometimes perceive an insult where none was intended. Unlike causticum, which is more affected by social injustices, Staphysagria is usually provoked by personal injustices. And although both remedies can develop a sensitivity or aversion to authority figures, Staphysagria is more angered by unfairness or injustice directed at himself. The Staphysagria child, for example, may scream, it's not fair, when he thinks that his parents are treating his brother more favorably than himself. Now, Staphysagria is also prone to strong feelings of guilt and shame. She may be ashamed of her inability to stand up for herself, she may feel ashamed that she allowed another person to provoke her to anger, a feeling that she despises and views as a form of weakness. She may feel ashamed about her past history of abuse and the way that it has affected her life. And she may feel guilty in the sense that she blames herself for something that somebody else is clearly responsible for and that is not of her doing. Staphysagria is listed prominently under ailments from shame. It's not surprising then that all that withheld anger, humiliation, shame, and wounded honor would predispose one to feelings of depression. A basic principle of human psychology is that unexpressed anger commonly produces feelings of depression. In the case of Staphysagria, depression can be associated with suicidal ideation. Staff is listed in the repertory in bold print under suicidal disposition by shooting. Staphysagria also has a strong relationship to the sexual sphere. As previously noted, it's one of the main remedies for the consequences of sexual abuse. On the flip side, there may be a strong sex drive with a strong sexual fantasy life and a tendency to masturbation. It's as if all that pent-up, unexpressed emotional energy gets rechanneled onto the sexual plane. Thus, Staphysagria tends to masturbate as a way of releasing emotional tension, and many will masturbate in order to enable themselves to fall asleep. Now let's talk about the Staphysagria fears. Not surprisingly, Staph fears the anger of others, and he also fears his own anger. A related fear is fear of losing emotional control. And in addition, sometimes there's a fear of heights. 
So in summation, the bottom line is that Staphysagria is the main remedy by far for problems in dealing with anger and ailments from suppressed anger. Now I'd like to make a couple points before we move on to the generals. One is that not all Staphysagria cases are going to match the profile of the sweet, sensitive, submissive person. Sometimes the remedy fits the totality of a case very well, and sometimes Staphysagria is just a smaller layer of a larger overall case. Secondly, it's important to be prepared for the possibility that Staphysagria may generate an aggravation. Patients are sometimes surprised and even frightened by the anger that can bubble up after taking the remedy. It's possible that years of pent-up anger can erupt in a fit of rage. If that does happen, it's important to reassure patients that it's a normal part of the process and that ultimately it bodes well for their long-term health and well-being. One must walk a fine line in preparing patients by gently alerting them to the possibility without scaring them. Okay, now let's talk about the generals. Comparatively speaking, the Staphysagria generals are less important than some of the psychological clues for the remedy. Likewise, there are fewer dependable generals, and those generals may be less obvious and less pronounced. So with that said, generally speaking, Staphysagria tends to be more chilly than warm. The Staphysagria food desires include a preference for sweets, but not necessarily a strong craving for sweets. There can be a desire for milk, especially cold milk, or there can be a polar opposite aversion to milk. But again, it's not necessary to see these generals in order to successfully prescribe the remedy. Some of the modalities, on the other hand, are emotionally based and more representative of the remedy. So whenever we see a physical condition that is aggravated by anger, Staphysagria rises to the top of the list of possibilities. Common Staphysagria symptoms aggravated by anger include headaches, abdominal pain, and trembling. So, as one would expect, the Staphysagria modalities include aggravation from anger, aggravation from indignation, aggravation from suppressed anger, and aggravation from mortification. Additional modalities include aggravation from sexual excesses and aggravation from sleep. This may include a tendency to aggravation after a daytime nap. Now there's one additional modality that serves as a type of metaphor for Staphysagria in general as a whole. That modality is aggravation after insults. Let's look for a moment at the definition of the word insult. As a verb, to insult is to treat scornfully with disrespect, with contempt. As a noun, an insult is a gross indignity on the psychological level. But the word can also refer to an injury on the physical level. In the case of Staphysagria, this idea of insult applies psychologically, and as we shall see, it also applies physically. In this sense, we think of an insult as a sharp assault upon the integrity of the physical body, like a sharp blade cutting into the skin. Now I ask you to keep this metaphorical idea in mind as we explore some common Staphysagria physical health problems. In terms of skin symptoms, Staphysagria is commonly indicated for styes and warts. It's indicated for recurrent styes, especially on the upper eyelids. And it's a remedy for genital warts in both men and women. It's also a remedy for psoriasis, especially in people who have suppressed their anger. Now here's the interesting thing. 
Staphysagia has a reputation as a remedy for pain caused by lacerations and surgical incisions. It even fits painful scars that result from such wounds. Here we have one of those metaphorical examples of a sharp insult to the integrity of the physical body. Now, Staphysagria is also a remedy for a wide variety of genitourinary problems. It's commonly indicated for cystitis, which is the medical term for a bladder infection. One keynote cystitis symptom for Staphysagria is urethral burning that is better while urinating and worse when not urinating. There may also be frequent or constant urging to urinate. Of course, Staphysagria has a well-known reputation for being the main remedy for honeymoon cystitis, which is a term used for bladder infections that occur after sexual intercourse or after frequent sex. It also fits bladder infections that occur after the first time having sex, which for some can be a particularly traumatic experience physically and or psychologically. In addition, Staphysagria is one of the main remedies for pain or inflammation that occurs after catheterization. Now, in both cases, cystitis after sex and catheterization, we have a similar phenomenon whereby the sensitive mucous membranes associated with the urethra are subjected to physical irritation and potential trauma. The insertion of a catheter commonly causes injury to the tissues of the urinary tract. So here again, we see examples of physical insults to the integrity of the body that can cause pain, inflammation, and infection. Now, Staphysagra can also be a remedy for bedwetting. And for men, it can be used to treat prostatitis. It's also indicated in orchitis, especially when there's pain and swelling of the left testicle. I'll never forget the case of a young man that I saw in the early years of my practice. He had recently sustained a particularly gruesome injury, having almost completely severed his thumb with an electric saw. Thankfully, a surgeon was able to reattach the thumb. He sat before me with his hand heavily bandaged and protected. To my surprise, he was consulting me for a different reason. Within days after the injury, he had developed an intense, sharp, neuralgic-type pain in his left testicle. The pain, he noted, was even worse than the pain in his thumb. His doctor couldn't explain it, antibiotics made no difference, and neither did painkillers. Now, what remedy do you think would fit severe left testicular pain triggered by a violent laceration to the thumb? I'm happy to say that after a few repetitions of Staphysagria, both sources of pain dramatically improved and his thumb went on to heal quite nicely. Now, let's finish up with a few more physical indications for Staphysagria. It can fit cases of abdominal pain or gallstone colic that are aggravated, of course, by anger or indignation. It can also fit sleep disturbances resulting from anger. One particular keynote clue documented in the literature is sleepiness all day, but sleeplessness at night. Staphysagria is also listed for hair loss caused by grief, and lastly, there's a tendency to premature tooth decay in children. The teeth may break off in pieces, and this can happen to both children and adults. Now, as for remedy relationships, Staphysagria, causticum, and colocynthus are well-known complements to each other. Remedies to compare to Staphysagria include Causticum, which is similarly sensitive and easily angered by injustices. Pulsatilla and baryta carb, 
both of which are gentle and passive enough to be easy targets for abuse. Natmir and Nat Carb are similarly easily wounded and are emotionally unexpressive. And lastly, calc floor, fluoric acid, and silica are also indicated for premature dental decay in children. Okay, I hope you found this exploration of Staphysagri to be helpful. As always, I welcome your comments and questions. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you'll join me for the next episode of All Things Homeopathy. May the vital force be with you.